Waterloo Regional Police, a uh, common guest to the Township of Woolwich. Thank you. Welcome. Too bad you still didn't live here, but that's okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you uh, for inviting me here, uh, I, I think. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I appreciate you re readjusting the schedule to, uh, to get me up earlier. Although, uh, <coughs> Deputy Chief uh, Beckett is holding my spot, so please uh, don't think that I don't have time for questions after. I'm more than happy to stay for as long as, uh, as is needed. Uh, I'm also joined by uh, Staff Sergeant Kathy Black, who's uh, not in uniform, but here. Uh, because, yes, absolutely undercover, but also because, um, you know, we as a police service have an interest in what happens in our community, but uh, not necessarily an opinion where it might not be our place to have an opinion. And, uh, and that's certainly where uh, I find myself today. Uh, more than happy to discuss, uh, I will be sure what your questions may be about with respect to policing and the impact that a potential casino could have on policing. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis crime, or uh, an increase or not on the demand for police resources, um, I'm also it would be remiss of me not to, to notice that uh, Chair Sealing is a member of our board is here, but of recognizing that he is here as a, a citizen delegation. So I just want to talk about those two issues: crime and demand on police resources, just briefly, and then more than happy to answer some questions. Uh, the first question around crime, uh, quite frankly is that we don't have any substantial, when I say we, I mean police services across Ontario, police chiefs, uh, we do not have any substantial information that could indicate positively or negatively that there would be a, an impact on crime or organized crime uh, with the presence of a casino in a community. It's not to say that there wouldn't be, we just don't have any data, data or evidence to support either. Uh, I, I sit on Provincial Organized Crime Committee, I've asked that committee now and have, have tasked them to uh, do some research in this area, but the fact that uh, it hasn't come to the radar uh, in some respects is uh, an indication also that it, uh, it is not connected necessarily with the legal gaming facilities that are present in Ontario. We, um, we do not have any evidence around collateral crime either but it is something that we're quite capable of measuring. And of course, living in a community and in a region where we do not have uh, a casino, it's not something that we have coded uh, in, any, uh, in any specific way, and we do not have any uh, knowledge of any potential impact that a, a neighboring casino would have. The issue around the demand on police resources is uh, something that is uh, a little bit grayer mainly because when we look at developments in a community, at any point we may find there to be an increase in demand on police resources given any type of development, whether it is a shopping plaza or a mall, whether it's a new subdivision, whether it's a um, particular industrial development. What we are capable of doing is measuring. We have a very sophisticated suite of analytical tools that we've developed in-house and not only can we measure and analyze the impact of development but we can also get into predictive analytics and analyze what potentially may be the result but we can only do that once we have an awful lot of information so in respect of a casino if we knew the location rural densely populated, if we knew size, is it just slots, is it gaming tables and slots, is it going to be an entertainment destination, is it going to be a restaurant, is there going to be hotels there, how large, uh, all of that we would factor into our analytical tools and probably give a fairly accurate uh, read on what, if any, potential demand on police resources would be. The way casinos work in Ontario, that the Ontario Provincial Police will be responsible for all gaming-related crimes and investigations. Cheating at cards uh, would be, the, or cheating at all, would be one of the most obvious uh, investigations that they would get into. All other criminal investigations would be the responsible 
responsibility of the police service of jurisdiction. Uh, and that would be both inside the casino, inside the casino property, or in the community at large. Uh, but again, uh, all of that is uh, really an unknown for us without detailed information as to uh, what the plans would be. And what we also offer, of course, in planning would be not only being able to see what the plans are and develop a sort of a analysis of what may be, but we also have a number of uh, trained officers in crime prevention through environmental design, SEPTED. Uh, we would be reaching out to our colleagues right across North America and offer assistance in design to mitigate any potential uh, activity that may occur as a result. It really is the information that I've uh, been able to gather and glean through uh, um, in the, reaches, the reach out that I have done with my colleagues across the, the province. talking about a legal casino? Yes. <laughs> so, we're not talking about yeah, a, not a Super Bowl day thing. Well, and, and, that, and that's where, uh, really, where my question came from, because as you know, uh, and maybe you heard today, again, uh, Combined Forces uh, Special Enforcement Unit uh, arrested 18 more people as a result of the uh, organized crime investigation and uh, illegal gaming investigation that uh, went down. There was a takedown on Super Bowl Sunday, and that investigation is continuing. Um, there are, uh, there is preliminary information that would suggest that that's an organized group, and it is a separate, completely separate from the legal gaming that takes place, as, uh, as we know, to exist in places like Niagara and Windsor and Ramwick and others, Brantford. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, trying to do our due diligence and thought may be a, an opportunity to, to address uh, council, uh, asked for uh, some information specific to organized crime uh, with casinos in Ontario and uh, our joint force organized crime unit in the province does not have any data or evidence that would draw a significant link between legal gaming Uh, thank you, Mayor Collins, for you, uh, Chief Cregan. Thank you for coming tonight, and um, I respect your position of neutrality. Um, <laughs> I, I understand uh, the position that you're in, and I respect that. Um, we, there's been discussion about crime and the effects of casinos and crime. Um, my question has to do more with uh, suicide, and suicide is one of the suggested um, manifestations, I guess you could say, of problem gambling. Uh, I would suggest it would be the ultimate uh, When police investigate suicides, how in depth do they go in terms of determining what has led the person to take their own life? Chief, I cannot comment specifically on the correlation between suicides and uh, gaming houses or gambling or casinos. We, uh, but to answer your question directly, we do a very thorough death investigation uh, for every suicide. Tragically, we have a number, and I would argue far too many in our community, uh, very often uh, young people, and uh, there are a myriad of reasons uh, as the root cause of, of the suicides that we see in our community today. Uh, stresses on uh, students, uh, addiction, abuse, uh, or uh, addiction issues, mental health issues. We do the best we can to determine the underlying cause and the root cause. We don't have a uh, sort of an analysis or a database that puts it together, although we do work with a suicide prevention uh, group in our region and provide information for those that are doing the research to examine. So I, 
I don't know what the uh, trend would be currently. Uh, I do know that if we had to, we could go backwards and look because, again, we have all of the information resident in our, in our record, and we do a very thorough investigation for every death. Thank you. Councillor Hurtais. Um, I was just wondering if it, uh, it's been brought to our attention about the traffic issues out near, what would you say, Aurora or something like that, with DWIs. Have you asked around if that's a, a concern? Because I know we don't have one here, so we can't really tell. But do you know anything about that? Uh, well, I can, I can speak uh, generally around any licensed establishment, whether it's a licensed establishment in uh, an urban core in our region or uh, one of our uh, rural licensed establishments. Wherever you have a licensed establishment, you have the potential for some type of uh, impaired driving. What we do is, again, we have, uh, uh, in, just in the process of uh, rolling this out to our front line, but currently right now, uh, for the last 12 months, we provide a very detailed analysis of where our uh, collisions occur, where alcohol was a factor. We also have uh, all of our arrests for impaired driving mapped. We have hot spots. We know when they occur, time of day, day of the week, time of the year. Uh, we deploy according to where the information is taking us and the evidence is taking us. Then we get into, uh, with that, we use that to lead us into a proactive enforcement and work with licensed establishments and bar owners to try to ensure that there are uh, smart serve practices in place and do what we can to mitigate any impaired driving. We do that regardless of where that establishment is. Any other questions from council? I, I just have a couple quick ones. Um, we This is kind of part two of our discussion on this uh, formally. Um, at part one we had one present presenter uh, who had talked about you know crime from Answer, maybe you can clarify. So, do police or do auto the regional police or any police for that matter keep track of when, when there is a, an incident where there's charges laid? Do they track that back to gaming? Is there a way of doing that? There is a way of doing that. Okay. We don't currently do it um, okay. for a couple of reasons. All right. Um, first and foremost, it, it's not something that has come to our attention. Okay. Uh, so, even with a, a neighboring uh, facility. Right. If, if it had, so even though it's not in our jurisdiction, if it was something that it was coming to our attention, we would, uh, right. we would be able to code it accordingly, mm -hmm. and our investigators would, uh, would make a recommendation, and then we would change our system. Okay. We, if we had, uh, I can tell you that if, if there were a casino or gaming facility in our region, uh, proactively we would create that code, mm -hmm. and we would. Uh, very easy for us to uh, do an analysis right. and, and have that data in front of us and, and report on it annually.